Uh, I'll let you know when we're live. Bez has spoken. <laughs> we're live. Go ahead. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm chair of the Board of Regents of Washington State University. My name is Brett Blankenship. This meeting of the WSU Board of Regents is called to order. I would like to remind the audience that several of our fellow board members and our presenters are participating in this meeting via Zoom. Members of the public are invited to view the meeting via the YouTube live stream and a link to the live stream is available on the Board of Regents website. In addition, I'm happy to share all present board members and staff are vaccinated and are following CDC and Department of Health guidelines, and we're holding this meeting safely. I would also like to provide a reminder, we will have a public comment period during the meeting. The public comment period will be after the regular agenda items and will last for up to 10 minutes. Each speaker will be allowed two minutes. At this time, I'd like to call for a report from our Chancellor uh, of the Spokane Health Sciences Campus, Dr. Daryl Dewall. Daryl, are you on the line? Yes, thank you, Regent Blankenship. And I would like to uh, turn the time over to founding Dean John Tomkoviak for our Elsinus S. Floyd College of Medicine and uh, express my appreciation to the regents for adjusting their schedule so that Dean Tom Koviak and I could speak earlier on the agenda. Uh, John has to step into an invited talk uh, fairly soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask John to get us kicked off. Thank you, Regent Blankenship. Well, thanks to all of you and thanks for allowing me to spend just a little bit of time uh, talking about the amazing things that the medical school at WSU is doing. And of course, uh, all of you know, we uh, had commencement yesterday for the college and uh, graduated our inaugural class of students in a uh, combined uh, virtual and drive-through ceremony uh, that was absolutely first class. Um, I'm sorry that all of us uh, could not have uh, done something that maybe we had originally intended, but what we did deliver was uh, really fantastic and uh, so appreciative to the team and all of the folks at WSU to allow it to, to happen. I wanted to share with you uh, some uh, statistics. I'm gonna share my screen here for a moment. And can you all see this? Not yet, John. Not no. yet, okay, hold on one second. How about now? Yeah, there it is. Okay, great. So, uh, I, I'm just going to share five brief slides with you, and uh, we don't have to go through every single thing on the slide. I just wanted to give you as much information as possible. So what you're seeing at the top of this slide is our uh, inaugural class, their matching statistics uh, for the class. And we're incredibly proud of the outcomes here. Uh, obviously, we, we've recruited our students. All of them have ties to the state of Washington. We want them to stay right here uh, to do their training and eventually practice. A big part of that is getting them to continue in their residency programs uh, right here. And we felt we did uh, amazing in this regard with about 40% of them uh, doing training right here in Washington. And then when you look at the numbers, uh, if you look at the Northwest, that goes up to 50 and 70% for the West. And uh, and over 50% matched in primary care, which we are happy about. But you know, we we our mission is not just about primary care. It's about uh, underserved and rural. There are so many needs uh, in the state of Washington uh, in terms of other specialties like surgery, for example, we have uh, 10 counties in the state that have one or zero surgeons uh, that are representing the entire county. So. Uh, that's just an example of uh, how we need to decrease 
uh, these uh, deficits uh, in rural and underserved areas. What I wanna point out, which I think is a significant number for our very first class is our match rate. Um, the match because of COVID was more competitive than usual with a lot of institutions uh, keeping their students in their own residency program. So it was a very competitive match this year. We, because we've never graduated a student, don't have a reputation for the quality of our students. And you would expect our match rate to be significantly lower because of that. But I think uh, due to the nature of our training and how well our students did in interviewing for their residencies, they really showed that they are uh, very well prepared to take on this next uh, phase of training and they did amazing. So we were so happy with our match results and our students' success. And you can look on, on the side, all the different specialties that our students were accepted into. We had folks uh, matching into Harvard, uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, University of California, Irvine, and some other really fantastic residency programs across the country, besides the ones right here at home. At the bottom of this, uh, of this slide, you see our demographics for our entering class for this next year. Once again, uh, we've done an amazing job of uh, getting the students that represent the state of Washington in terms of uh, first generation and growing up in rural and underserved areas. We're gonna have the best numbers we've ever had in terms of underrepresented in medicine. Um, we have a number of pipeline programs that are just beginning to uh, bear uh, fruit in terms of uh, delivering students who have been involved in the pipelines. And so uh, we're incredibly satisfied with uh, how we're representing the state. Um, we have really amplified uh, our efforts in terms of diversity, equity, inclusion. As you can see by this slide, this wasn't something we started recently. It, it, started, it was a project that started two years ago. Uh, we have an incredibly energetic uh, dean of diversity, and equity, inclusion, and belonging in uh, David Garcia. And uh, he has put together a 54 page strategic plan for the college. And we began uh, enacting that plan earlier this year in January. And uh, we are incredibly proud of it. We have already received accolades from the AAMC, which is the national organization that we belong to for medical schools. And uh, David has been um, an invited speaker now uh, a couple of different times in regional and national meetings to talk about the work that we're doing. And so what I wanted to tell you with this slide is that we are actively engaged in uh, making not only our college better, uh, but uh, trying to make the region and all of those uh, communities that we are touching uh, better in terms of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know John Roll had talked to you about our research uh, efforts in the College of Medicine. Uh, to be just uh, six years old and have the kinds of results that we have is really amazing. And it's a testament to Dr. Roll's efforts as our Vice Dean of Research and the amazing researchers we have. We have a very small cadre of researchers, but our effort is about one and a half times the national average. So our faculty are one and a half times more productive than the average uh, research faculty at a medical school um, person to person. And uh, that is uh, a real testament to our researchers. I know John went into way more great detail, um, but what I wanted to show you and what I wanted to briefly talk about is uh, our research has been very focused to this point, And that I think is one of the reasons for our success. We only have three or four areas that we have really uh, focused our uh, financial and other resources in, and that has allowed us to grow a number of amazing uh, scientists uh, in these areas. And because these areas uh, really have um, an ability to overlap with many of the other kinds of research that uh, the entire university is engaged in, we feel we are multiplying the research efforts of the rest of the university. I believe that we are still the only college in the entire university that has a research collaboration with every other college uh, uh, at WSU. Well, as you all know, our graduate medical education is really the next strategic 
push that our college needs to make. After our students graduate with their MD, they have to complete a residency before they can go on to independently practice. And uh, you know, this is, I think, a real expectation for uh, all of the state is for us to grow uh, GME, and particularly on the east side of the state, there are about 25 to 2,700 residency slots uh, in the state, and uh, only 200 of those are east of the Cascades. So we really need to um, grow GME east of the Cascades and we wanna grow them in rural and underserved areas. I'm sure you've heard this number before, but 70% of residents will stay within a hundred mile radius of where they finish their training. So it's incredibly important to get these programs in and around those communities that we want these doctors to eventually serve when they finish their training. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we have our first residency program uh, in Everett that's in association with Providence. And uh, we had an incredibly successful match. Uh, we didn't have to go through what they call the scramble, which means we filled all of our positions on the first go, which uh, only about 60% of residencies in the country Country did this year. And, uh, and we also, this uh, you see underneath the Pullman residency, we've been working on this for a number of years. Uh, the, uh, the, the information is embargoed until Monday, but I'm really happy to tell you that we did receive preliminary approval for this program. And so we're very excited because we're going to have a, a WSU residency program in Pullman at Pullman Regional Hospital. It will only be uh, the second of its kind in the entire nation uh, having a uh, program based in a critical access hospital. Uh, usually that's very hard to do because these hospitals are small and they have a lower patient volume. But uh, our team was able to figure out how to meet the standards set out by the accreditors so we can bring this program uh, into, into being. We have two other programs that we're working on, but this really needs to be a focus for our college and we need to provide opportunities for our own students to stay in Washington to continue their training. Uh, and we're so excited for those opportunities. The last slide I wanted to share with you is what we're doing with our uh, faculty practice plan, Range Community Clinic, uh, formerly known as Bobby Health. Uh, it is just so exciting to see who uh, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, uh, being able to practice uh, within the context of the university and the health science campus. Uh, this is a college, -led, uh, college of medicine led initiative, but we are partnering uh, with colleges of pharmacy and nursing to deliver healthcare to people. Uh, in, in earnest, we started about a year ago in February, but we really ramped up uh, our care services, I would say since November of last year. We're still a very small team. We have only about, uh, three or four full-time providers, that's physicians, PAs, nurses, pharmacists. So we don't have a lot of folks yet on the team and yet we've made some real impacts. You can see the numbers in terms of uh, patient interactions and uh, we've definitely been active in terms of responding to COVID. The one program I hope you have heard about is our street medicine program. This is a program in which we bring care to the homeless in and around Spokane. Uh, this is a full comprehensive primary care in addition to uh, COVID related care. Our goal is to get them connected to other services so they can um, get, get back on their feet and get, you know, get to the life that they would like to have. And in that efforts, we have, uh, coordinated with over 25 other agencies in and around the Spokane area uh, to make that happen. So this is a huge College of Medicine led initiative in Spokane. We're really making a difference uh, in this population. And it frankly wouldn't have happened if uh, the College of Medicine uh, wasn't here. So we're so excited about this. Range Health has the opportunity to, I think, be a game changer going forward for the university. As we begin to listen to communities and understand what their healthcare needs are, we'll be able to meet those. 
Uh, we are just bringing on our second mobile health care coach uh, that was donated by uh, Mr. Ravenholt and uh, as a gift as a part of the Ravenholt Foundation. That will come online uh, later this summer and fall, and we plan to deploy that in and around our Tri-Cities campus uh, in the central basin of Washington, where there's a, a lot of need for that kind of care. So. I'm gonna stop there. There's so many other things I could tell you, but I wanted to give you a sense of uh, how much the College of Medicine is doing and uh, all the exciting opportunities uh, that we have uh, going forward. So Regent Blankenship, if it would be okay, if any of the Regents have questions for Dean Tom Koviak and they would like to ask those, um, I would encourage them to do so. Any questions from the board for Dr. Dr. John? Well, Dr. T, this is Marty. Hi, and Marty. Uh, I just, you know, it's, um, it is hard to not kind of be overcome by emotion um, in the work that you and your team and Daryl have done. But just uh, from the time that we interviewed you, um, the Davenport grant and uh, to what you've been able to accomplish with the accreditation process. The accreditation process for the Board of Regents um, for medical school when you're starting from nothing is just more than probably what anybody really has a grasp on. And some of us got to participate in interviews around that and uh, just all the check marks that had to be done just to be able to teach medicine was is just in itself a massive feat. So. Um, we are uh, just the community and Washington State University is indebted to the work and the effort that you and the team have put in place um, to make yesterday a reality and going forward. So thank you very much. It's really impressive, really isn't the right word in my opinion, but it's very exciting for Washington State. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're all celebrating Dr. Tom Kowiak, your success has been our success. And uh, we also honor uh, many of the people in the community that did a heavy, heavy lift to bring all this together, as well as some of the colleagues that have come and gone on, the, on this board to do the political lifting. To have it all come together yesterday was an emotional time. And uh, regret, regret we couldn't be there with you, but what a wonderful celebration. Thanks to all of you. Regent Sims. The, I need to uh, give a big shout out to, uh, uh, to Mr. Kobiak and Daryl. The state of Washington is actually embarked on an incredibly aggressive uh, health reformation uh, effort. I mean, every single function, whether it's the benefit exchange, which I chair, whether it is the Washington Health Alliance work, uh, and they provide, they attend, they're so well regarded that I think that the only reason why there's any movement to have fundamental change, and it's very significant, but it's fundamental change in healthcare in the state so that we will be the best place on the planet to get healthcare is because of these two gentlemen. Uh, they walk in the room, they, have, they, say, they, they sit down on those tables and everybody wants to hear them first. Um, and that tells you a lot about a lot of strong-willed people a lot of people who already have professional reputations, um, they're distinguished. And all of a sudden you have two people who can walk in and command the whole room. So when we finally finish this process um, of healthcare reform in the state so that every place else is gonna to have to model themselves after us, these two gentlemen are gonna be the reason why it happened. It languished for years. They came in, they were the spark plug, the energy, the fuel that people needed. Um, and they're listened to, re respected, uh, and they been catalytic. So I just need to say to both of them, thank you very much for your efforts to alter healthcare in the state, make us the best place in the United States ever to get healthcare. Thank you, Rob. Any other comments? Go Cougs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Tom Koviak. And uh, 
Chancellor Dewald, did you have uh, a presentation to give as well? I do, Regent Blankenship. So if it'd be okay, I will go ahead and share my screen and uh, get us started. So I would like to acknowledge um, the regents. I'd like to acknowledge a number of people who, to borrow from President Schultz, have leaned in in amazing ways. So like Marty, it's hard not to feel just a little bit emotional about this. But as I said prior to our meeting, we've adopted the SEMS model of service to others. And when you have a higher calling of serving other people, you're motivated in a different way. So thank you for what you have done. I'd like to give you a brief update and provide you an opportunity to ask some questions in moving forward. And I want to thank uh, Founding Dean John Tom Kobiak for spending some time with us this morning and presenting on some, just a few of the highlights regarding medicine and the great things that are happening. So what I would like to do is go through a few updates. I'd like to talk with you about our growing statewide um, opportunities. I would like to mention to you growth and then how we can plan for that and then the consideration of our rebudgeting. But what comes to mind for me again is thankfulness, appreciation, opportunity and growth. And I'll talk about those things today. So our mission is education, research, health care, as Dean Tom Kobiak has pointed out, but that crosses all of our colleges and innovation and economic development. We want to be the strongest health sciences land grant organization that we can absolutely be. So we talk about what we do as WSU Health. It's an organizing concept. So I wanna point out that although the College of Medicine, Nursing and Pharmacy are located in Spokane as headquarters, they're distributed across the state. And one of the themes of my presentation today is that all the campuses are involved, all of the colleges are involved. So when you think about health sciences, please remember the longstanding strength of a college of veterinary medicine. Think about the distributed strengths across our different colleges. Also, please remember that the leadership, the staff colleagues, the students across the system, including at Everett, Pullman, Spokane, Tri-Cities, Vancouver, and Yakima, that they are key in the success and the service. So one of the highlights that you are all aware of is our inaugural class graduating. And you've heard about the amazing thing, things that the College of Medicine team has done. But folks, this is a celebration of so many people. This is the, the inaugural class, I believe, in their white coat ceremony. So the bookend of their white coat ceremony starting and then for them to graduate as physicians going on to residency programs, it's an amazing thing. How did we get here? The vision and foresight of many people inside this institution, regents, leaders, presidents who had vision, who escalated the vision, those who called us into action to get this done. But across our system, this has required so many. Our government relations team, with Vice President Kerr and her team, Chris Muick, so many people that we could highlight over the years who have dedicated themselves to this vision. So many other people across our system in, in research and in operations, student affairs, who have said, this is something we want to do. And Regent Sims, yes, we want to do it the right way. We want to be about better health, better health care. We want to serve not only the state of Washington, but this nation the best way that we can. 
the number of legislators at the state level, the local level, and those even at the federal level who saw, who, who bought into and supported and guided this vision. The leaders in our community, including some on our region's team who knew this was the right thing to do. We are a powerful community-based health sciences with a powerful and meaningful high impact community-based, community committed college of medicine. So we're proud of those students, but we are very thankful for the commitment from this community, the state and this institution. One of the things that we saw during the pandemic is that our students, staff and faculty stepped up in amazing ways. And I want you to be aware that they went out on their own, they coordinated, they worked hard across the state of Washington to provide testing for many. Many people actually who were underserved didn't have opportunities for testing. The same thing has happened with the vaccination. Our students especially have stepped up, unsung heroes, putting shots in the arms. So this is an outdated number. It's well over 30,000 individuals. I will tell you, my daughter was vaccinated by a WSU College of Nursing student. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I had no idea that that was happening, but our team really stepped up. We have an opportunity today, and it's a cool thing that right out here in this parking lot, pharmacy and nursing will have their drive up, drive through graduation ceremonies. But it is really to celebrate what they have done they are service oriented people. Dean Tom Kobiak pointed out that College of Medicine has already launched and has a successful residency program, internal medicine program in Everett. Yes, collaboration. Guess what? Having the cohort of students and Chancellor Petrie, he's excited about having those students on his campus. But beyond that, we see these linkages across the communities and the partnership with Providence to establish this really represents us stepping up in regard to our credibility and our abilities to deliver. So there are so many people who have done a great job with this, too many to name. But as John pointed out also, we will have an opportunity to celebrate the second of its kind a residency program at a crit critical access hospital like Pullman Regional Hospital. So please keep that um, uh, to yourselves for now. We will, we will see the announcements come out. There's been so many great efforts in this regard. I wanted to continue to make you aware that across our system, we are working hard to engage with the tribal nations. And we have some great leadership here on our campus, moving forward to build the Native American Health Sciences Program and develop a center for Native American health. We are doing this in collaboration with the team out of the provost's office. Provost Chilton is committed to this. We have a number of people across our system who's, who not only have helped develop the vision, but are helping to deliver it. We're pleased that we have space for our Native students. We've stepped up in recruiting the students into our undergraduate and graduate programs, and we're seeing the fruit of this. We're seeing that our Tribal Nation partners are viewing WSU as a good partner, one who values them, who wants to work with them in a respectful and humble way. So we have space here on campus. If we had opportunity to uh, give you a tour, we would do so, but it's really quite striking the progress that is being made. I wanna remind you that we serve the state. And again, this is just the three health sciences colleges, but remember how many more are committed to the health sciences, including the College of Veterinary Medicine. But we are cited across the state where we have educational, research, and healthcare activities. But remember, 
we are already a network across the state of Washington with clinical sites, over a thousand clinical affiliation agreements across the state. We are here to serve all 39 counties. We are here to serve those clinical sites. And again, recent Sims, to really change the way we do healthcare. So part of that is the difference we make with our research activities. These are just a few of those areas. And we are focusing on community health as one of our strengths. Several of you have heard about the community health programs that include several prominent researchers in medicine, pharmacy, nursing, and the College of Veterinary Medicine. But we also engage very well with the College of Arts and Sciences and Connors. So there's so much opportunity here. In fact, as John said, we're here to collaborate across our system. So what does that look like in terms of the growth? Many of you have seen this slide before, but this represents responsibility and commitment. So in 2011, the awards and the mirrored research expenditures for the three health sciences colleges out of Spokane were about 10 million. In 2020, they approached $40 million, so almost a fourfold growth in that period of time. For 2021, we'll plateau a little bit. This has been a challenging year for many, and our researchers have been amazing to continue to submit grants to get their work done. We'll see a little bit of a dip, but we anticipate this will be well into the $30 million um, range for awards. So they're to be congratulated for their incredible efforts. And several of you were able to hear Dr. Celestina Barbosa Liker yesterday, a real leader, and she serves as Vice Chancellor of Research for our Health Sciences, and Dr. John Roll, who Dean Tom Koviak mentioned. So we are committed to growing the research. You also are aware that our numbers of our students that are 70% professional students, they continue to go up. So we're committed to the educational mission. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to grow in response to needs. The Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine is considering a public health program. This would be with colleges of nursing and veterinary medicine. The College of Nursing Social Work Program, this is something that will be a collaboration initially with Chancellor Haynes and her team at WSU Tri-Cities. The College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences is developing an undergraduate program. We think it will be a powerful pathway program for professionals. The Spokane campus has developed a strong diversity center we have a fitness center we're about to open up, and we are looking forward into the future where we would develop our own student health. One thing that is very important to, as John would say, it's in our DNA, is how we support our students in terms of education so that they live interprofessional education than team healthcare delivery. So WSU Health Sciences is expanding the conversation about interprofessional education across the discipline. <coughs> what this will do is this will enable our students to go out into the professional workforce being calibrated to work as teams. So this is led by Vice Chancellor Gwen Hallis, but she is working across the colleges. And there are many committed individuals in our colleges who know that this is going to provide better health care. So another thing that we are considering and we're active on and it's been mentioned is we're looking at the WSU Yakima site and how we would support WSU Yakima. So, Currently, nursing has a Bachelor of Science and a, a DNP program, and then pharmacy has a significantly large cohort. There are about 300 full-time equivalent students who are being educated in Yakima. We don't have sufficient budget 
right now, but we are looking at how to achieve success. I want to point out the majority of these students are students of color. So we feel that this is important to our mission. WSU Health Science budget is an opportunity. We're currently co-located with Pullman. We're considering revisioning. We're working hard with Vice President Stacy Pearson and her team to do this. Currently, our research has grown so fast, we don't have sufficient funding to support it. So we're looking at ways to change and improve. This is a representation of the responsibility that we've accepted. And if you'll note, in the last six years, we've gone from a budget, a total budget, for our colleges and our campus of a little bit more than 60 million per year to 100 million per year. This feels like and is a representation of investment by the state, but it also is a representation of responsibility. Here are the different areas so that you're aware, and I do want to make a few points. We are very pleased with the investment from the state in the College of Medicine. But what you will note is, if you think about it, is our college operated in deficit for several years and we were playing catch up. Again, there are so many to be commended. The government relations team is amazing folks and they are part of the success in regard to funding for the College of Medicine. I'm excited that the completion funding of 3.6 million from the state for the College of Medicine was granted this year. Our, the campus um, funding, if you look at core and foundational is flat. Nursing, their budget is going down and we do need to address this. Pharmacy has been steady and strong, but they will take a little bit of a dip because their student numbers are going down. Dean Lead is doing an amazing job of trying to recruit new students into their pharmacy program, the largest and by my estimation, the best in the state. Another area that is an opportunity, and I won't dwell on this, is for us to do better at our fundraising. President Schultz and I have an ongoing conversation about how we can do better. So we'll be working on this, uh, especially in the next few months. So what are more of the opportunities? Statewide responsibilities, as I mentioned, Yakima, what we would do in Seattle, launching the new academic programs, and then our research expansion. So with that, I want to make sure that you have heard how thankful we are for your leadership, how thankful we are for the leadership across our university system, and how appreciative we are of those champions who have helped to build the health sciences across this state. So with that, I wanna provide opportunity for questions if people have any questions. Regent Blankenship, back to you. Thank you, Daryl. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Dr. Powell. Um, this is actually more a comment than a question, but um, I just want to echo, but not repeat all that was said by my fellow regents just a little bit ago. But one of the first things that I got involved with, or is actually get involved with um, in 2014 when I was a new regent, was the, the medical school plan, well, not planning, but the concept. And those were early days. Um, we were just trying so hard to get started. There was so, it, it, and sometimes, I mean, there were, there were exciting days, but there were also some, were some very dark days when we weren't sure was it really going to get passed? Was, were we going to make it to accreditation? Could we pick the right dean? I mean, you know, there are just a myriad of things. And yet there was a very strong vision and a lot of people in this local community, but WSU wide, who were very supportive. Um, fast forward to today, and I don't think any of us back in those early days could have envisioned what we have heard at this meeting today between yesterday and today. Um, I agree with Marty, it's, 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 it's a truly uh, wonderful celebratory, but also emotional time. And to see this all come 
to fruition and go way beyond what we would have expected in this period of time, plus the promise for the future. And I, I just can't applaud all of you enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Kind words and back at you. That's, that's beautiful, Laura. Any, anyone else? What she said. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> well said. Well, thank you, Daryl. Appreciate the report and, and the fine work. And we look forward to more great things. So uh, thank you. If you have no other comment, I'll, I'll move, move along then. Thanks I believe so uh, Regent Sims had, had a question. Oh, did I? I can't. <laughs> Ron, did you have a chance to talk to the Gates Foundation yet? Not recently, we will. And uh, yes. Uh, when are you going to see them? We haven't set it up. We've reached out, Ron. Is it Dr. David Fleming you're seeing? Um, we, we don't have that defined yet, sir. So, um, but we've, we've engaged with them. If you can send me your contact information, not only yours, I'll send it to David because David is the one that makes the decision where the Gates Foundation's healthcare money goes. Um, and uh, he used to work for King County. We've made we, we've been good friends for a gazillion years. Uh, and uh, so I would like for I think if he hears from what you're saying, he is going to be one very happy camper about trying to get us. Uh, but as Dr. David Fleming, um, and he makes the decisions for the Gates Foundation as to where its healthcare money goes. So I want to see you hooked up. And so if he doesn't get back to you soon, I will call David and say, my biggest mistake was bringing you in King County. Uh, but uh, it, he is a fabulous person and you would love him a lot. The other person is Janine Pease, pretty on top, Native American, Crow Nation. Have you had a chance to, she is probably the most influential um, uh, Native American in healthcare, at least in uh, from South Dakota to Washington State. She's pretty, she's stunning. She's a MacArthur Award winner as well. And uh, so I will give you her contact information and I will contact her to tell her that you're a good guy. Uh, because I think she's going to, she likes this mic. She doesn't like to have people just talk, talk, talk. She wants performers and you, and you fall into that category. So I'll send you those two, but you're going to have to remind me because at my age, I forget. I have a Darryl. question I'd like to ask, uh, Daryl. Um, I'm just curious. Um, I'm really pleased to see the movement into central Washington and particularly Yakima Valley. Um, and I'm just curious if uh, there's going to be any contact or working. Uh -oh. um, there might be some connection with them. Yes. Uh, Regent Serna, uh, you froze up a little bit. Contact with whom? Um, the Yakima Valley Farm Workers Clinic. Yes, yes. And uh, maybe I can follow up with you and talk with you about that, but the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Regent Blankenship. Thank you, Daryl. Any other comments? Thanks, Daryl. Well done. We'll move ahead then and hear a report from the president of the university, Dr. Kirk Schultz. All right. Um, can my colleagues hear me okay? Thumbs up? Okay, good, excellent. Uh, well, we're on the Spokane Health Sciences campus, so I just wanna take a quick opportunity to acknowledge the leadership of <clears throat> Daryl is our Vice President of Health Sciences, our three academic deans here, John Tomkowiak, you heard from earlier today, uh, Mary Coythan, who's our uh, Dean of Nursing, and then Mark Lee, who's our Dean of Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Sciences. And, you know, normally we're on a campus, you all have a chance to visit with all these folks, and it's, uh, sorry we can't do that today, but uh, the trajectory is very bright here. 
really positive, lots of great things going. And uh, so I feel real good about that. Um, I also want to acknowledge our faculty and staff and students across all of our campuses. This has really been just a really challenging time for everybody uh, as we've moved through COVID. I do feel the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train as vaccines step up uh, as we start to do more things in person. So, uh, but people have really gone the extra mile across all of our campuses to meet students where they are. Our students have also been flexible. Our staff at all of our campuses have really worked really hard. So just uh, you know, a big kudos to everybody associated with the educational enterprise across the state. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, during the COVID time though, I wanna highlight a couple things that we've done in a really proactive way, I think, to take leadership in the state. So uh, next, first slide, please. Uh, one of these first was, in, in the Board of Regents, you all have talked about this in the past, is us being more proactive on marketing, uh, taking things that we're doing and pushing content, not sort of passively allowing people to sort of come. And so one of the things that we did is a paid set of videos uh, with Guy Palmer, Regents professor, a uh, member of the National Academy of Medicine and one of our most preeminent faculty member around vaccines uh, and answering questions, common questions and concerns. Uh, the analytics show that we reached nearly 850,000 individuals across the state of Washington with these videos. And uh, the series was responsible directly for over 1,700 Washington residents going and getting a vaccine. So we feel really good about this. This is a good step forward for uh, a lot of folks on our campus. And anytime we can take a prominent faculty member uh, doing a really good job and we push that out, it's making a difference in the state of Washington, this is really positive. So uh, next slide, please. Just a quick shout out to our nursing students and faculty uh, statewide. Uh, our College of Nursing students and faculty work at 300 separate clinic events. Uh, over this last academic year, administered more than 15,000 uh, vaccine doses. That's as of late March. I think we may have better data, but again, these are folks learning about healthcare and out in the healthcare space. And again, WSU got a lot of positive PR over this in the Spokesman Review and the Seattle Times and other places about the work that our students are doing. So this was also really positive. So next slide, please. Uh, one of the other things is we, I just want to continue to remind everybody, thanks to Stacy's good work, our faculty, our deans, vice presidents, we continue to see a real turnaround in our fiscal health. In three years, we uh, filled in a $30 million annual deficit, and uh, the 2020 fiscal year, uh, we completely flipped that around and went from essentially four or five years prior to that to $30 million annual operating deficit to a surplus of $28 million. Uh, what we see is, and you all have seen this in other reports, if you look compared to peers, uh, other institutions of our size, now our metrics on our financial and fiscal health are approaching uh, where they should be uh, for compared to those other institutions. So just a thank you to Stacy for her leadership in this space. Thank you to our deans, our faculty, this has really been a, a team effort and uh, because people have had to decide we're not going to do something that we really should do. Uh, and so it's not just a collective decision. Office of the president, we get to stand and give a report, but it's really our campus community that's made this happen and just a appreciation to that. Um, I don't want to leave anything about fiscal health without just another acknowledgement of the fantastic year we've had. Uh, with the state of Washington from WSU's perspective. And I appreciate the work Colleen and Chris uh, Mulek do. Uh, next slide, please. Well, we've we've talked a lot about the uh, medical students who are here. Uh, I won't repeat the other things that people have said, but there are a few other ones that I want to acknowledge that didn't get acknowledged. Um, obviously, President Elson Floyd was a key uh, catalyst and leader for making this happen. and. Uh, I know he would be pleased today to sort of see where the health sciences at WSU is. And if we go back and think about the difficult move of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences from Pullman to Spokane, the build out of this campus here, the investment by the state in buildings, the medical school, you just start adding it all together. It is an amazing story. And I saw pictures of what the U District looked like before it was the U District. 
And if you had taken somebody back to that time, shown a bunch of train tracks and stuff and said, that's going to be a medical school one day, people would like you're crazy. So I just want to acknowledge that. The other thing is um, I'm a Virginia Tech alum and they also started a medical school and they're going to admit their largest class ever at 49 students coming in. Uh, they started in the 20s to try and get a medical school up and going. Uh, if we look at what the state of Nevada has done at UNLV, they're at 60 students and have struggled some with some funding. I just want to acknowledge the state of Washington's investment here should not be, you know, when we live in the state, you're like, of course they should do that. But if you look around the country to other places that have tried to do a similar thing, this has been notable. A lot of times people had to deal with a hospital or something like that, kind of band-aid it together. Um, it's, it's been amazing. Um, I also want to express appreciation to our faculty Senate colleagues. People don't remember maybe a few years ago how fast we had to move curricular items and things through a faculty Senate. So when you talk about this being a collective as a whole, it's really been everybody across the system deserves some credit for our students graduating today. And I just look forward to seeing where we're going to be in the future. So next slide. Well, we also had a, uh, a drive through ceremony at last Saturday in, in Pullman celebrating there. And, and you can uh, see a picture of some doofus there wearing the president's robe. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we had a great time. Uh, Mary Jo Gonzalez, our vice president for student affairs, uh, Kim Hol Holopa, her chief of staff, they led this effort and we showed up on a beautiful sunny day. We had somewhere around 400 students and cars kind of went through and we had people in the back of pickup trucks and once somebody had a tiara on, people dressed up, there were parents there. It was a great way to sort of celebrate and maintain the distancing uh, that we need to. Uh, just a reminder, we have drive through commencement here today. Uh, we also uh, have system-wide virtual celebration for graduates uh, that we taped earlier uh, will be this weekend. We have drive through ceremonies in the Tri-Cities. Uh, WSU Everett has a graduation box pickup this weekend and Vancouver has a drive through graduation celebration. So we're all looking forward to getting back in a big room with you all as regents and others and celebrating our graduates in a more traditional sense. But I've been really proud of our staff, how creative they have been, finding ways to celebrate in, in a creative environment. And look, when you talk to families, you talk to students, they are feeling really good about it's not the same as they were expecting, but it's certainly a lot different than just saying, hey, we'll send you something in the mail. So I just want to congratulate all of our graduates across the whole system. Um, and uh, with that, we talk about graduation. One of the things is student achievement. And so let's talk about some pretty cool student achievements that I think you all should hear about. Uh, next slide, please. So the Arthur Ash Jr. Sports Scholar, Savannah Lee Guyen. And uh, Savannah was a standout member of our women's ten tennis team. Uh, she was selected this spring uh, to the Arthur Ashe Sports Scholar Award by the Diverse Issues in Higher Education magazine. Uh, just some of her accomplishments. Uh, she has a 3.95 uh, GPA. She hopes to go to pharmacy school after graduating with a degree in neuroscience. Uh, she speaks three languages, English, French, and Vietnamese. And during the 2021 tennis season, had a team best 18 and six overall record, a 7-3 seven and three mark in Pac-12 play. So fantastic achievement, fantastic young woman, really pleased to have her as part of the K-State uh, family. Next slide, please. Next, we have uh, Daniela uh, Carafal uh, Macias. Uh, she's a pre-law student majoring in Spanish. She's been selected for a National High School Equivalency Program Camp Association Congressional Internship. Uh, camp stands for College Assistance Migrants Program. Uh, she'll begin May 30, a 10-week internship, and she's going to be working for Representative Raul uh, Grijalava from Arizona to draft communications to constituents, write and review documents, and strategize to develop and advance legislation on issues he supports. So once again, a WSU coup, having a great experience and uh, really going to be able to bring those experiences back uh, to our campus and in the classroom and, and with our colleagues. Uh, next slide, please. Um, let me introduce to you our computer, uh, one of our computer science doctoral students. Her name is 
Serene uh, Bella, Bella Cara, and uh, she won an IBM PhD fellowship. Uh, these are highly competitive. You may remember a year ago, we had one of our computer science PhD students win a Microsoft uh, PhD fellowship. And typically these things are only about a dozen or so of these awards. Uh, this is a two year fellowship, provides funding as well as mentorship with an IBM researcher in which students collaborate on research or technology project. She's looking, she's working in the AI machine learning area. And uh, her advisor is Dr. Uh, Jana Dapa, who's the George and, Barry, jo George and Joan Berry uh, professor uh, in engineering. So it's great to see some prominence coming out of our computer science program. We've seen they really elevate their game in the last four or five years and really excited to see that. Next slide, please. Well, one of the things that started way before my time here in the Honors College was uh, making sure that we were uh, doing everything we could to help our undergraduate students, particularly the WSU Pullman campus, be really competitive for these national scholarships and awards. And one of those is the Goldwater Awards, Goldwater Fellowships. And this year, we had three uh, WSU students win those. These are given to highly qualified undergraduates attending to pursue degrees and careers, excuse me, in math, natural sciences, uh, or engineering. So the three that are shown here, uh, the first is uh, India Dykes. Uh, India is a junior from Spokane, majoring in bioengineering in the Boylan College of Engineering and Biosciences. Uh, Haley Morris is a junior from Issaquah. Uh, she is in the Honors College and majoring in biochemistry in the School of Bio Molecular Biosciences and Veterinary Medicine. And then finally, Gunnar Sly. Gunnar is a junior from right here in Spokane Valley, majoring in chemical engineering, also in the Boylan College of Engineering. So just congratulations to these three outstanding Cougs. And it's great to see national recognition uh, through the Honors College for these really competitive awards. Next slide, please. Well, one of the other exciting research ventures that we're starting to see more work on, and this is, this is the uh, advantages of having a medical school, is we're doing a lot more work on 3D printing of organs. Uh, and what's happened now is we've got faculty who say, hey, I can collaborate directly now with somebody in medical school within WSU system. They'll have to go find somebody else out somewhere else. Uh, what's shown here is uh, Arden Gozum, uh, who is also uh, holds the second George and Joan Berry uh, professorship. And uh, he's doing a lot of work developing a new unique scaffolding, scaffolding material for engineered tissues that can be fine-tuned for growing natural tissues. I'll talk in a minute about another faculty member uh, who just got here uh, who's doing artificial, um, doing things to do hearts. And so for complicated heart surgery, they can do scanning. He can actually print a heart so that the surgeon can look and see exactly what they're gonna see when they go into the body. This is all being done at WSU Pullman by our current faculty, and it's really outstanding to see, and it's a real growth area for us. Next slide, please. Many of you may have seen this uh, research that came out recently. We're also doing a lot of work in the environment and things that are important to not just our state and region, but nationally, internationally. Uh, one of the things that a group of researchers is looking at is how plastics slip through the environment. So one of the things they found is that 90% of tap water in the United States contains nanoscale plastics. And uh, part of this study, they found that uh, people eat about five grams of plastic a week. Basically, the amount of plastic in one of your credit cards is what people consume a week in these nanomaterials. And what they want to do is really focus on how can that be removed through drinking water. Next slide, please. Well, as I finish up my, my remarks, let me uh, talk a little about philanthropy. Um, we had Coogs Give 2021. A lot of universities do these giving days types of things. This year, over 700,000 in a single day was raised. And this has really come a long ways during my time here, where the first couple of years, if we got a couple hundred thousand, we thought that was really good. This will break a million dollars before too long in a single day. And this is really impressive. Through this one day, Support for the College of Veterinary Medicine had 259 gifts, totaling $337,000. So this is complementary to all the other work that we do in philanthropy, but could step up across the country. We had donors from 30 states making nearly 1,300 distinct gifts to different things across all of our campuses. So a big thank you to our Cougs. Finally, uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, we did an event this year that was very similar to a Shark Tank event. And we have a group of donors called the Palouse Club uh, that largely in the Bellevue, Washington area that pool their resources. And we did a campus-wide competition, had somewhere near 70 proposals submitted for $50,000 uh, type of uh, funds to come in to advance their research, to move commercialization forward, whatever they wanted to do, very flexible. That narrowed down to six uh, who did a presentation of this donor group who were going to fund three of them. Uh, John Jones, who leads that group for us, called me that night. He goes, Kirk, we couldn't make a decision, so we decided to fund all six. And uh, these are things like uh, the person doing the 3D printing of the heart. We had another person that looking at uh, doing research with the bears and the bears we have in Pullman and using that to suggest uh, solutions to eliminate, not treat, eliminate diabetes in the world. These are the kinds of things our folks were doing. And this group of individuals just said it's all so outstanding. They want to support as much as they could. So it's a reminder. We have fantastic faculty and staff and students doing amazing work across the system. And we want to continue to find ways to enhance uh, our faculty's ability to be successful. Next slide. And with that, I tried to go quickly because I know we, we were pressed for time, but uh, we got a lot of great stuff happening. We have a fantastic set of people at WSU. I'm looking forward to being back in the fall. Thank you all for your continued support across this year. Look forward in June to having some real lengthy conversations around the system, what we're doing with data, those types of things where we're not doing business items, but we're really thinking about our future and how do we position WSU for continued growth and excellence. So with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to visit with the Regents. Thank you, Mr. President. Any questions or comments for President Schultz? Just make a real quick comment. You know, as I think about um, a year ago when we were, when we were seeing the, the you know, Hearing about the impacts, financial impacts of uh, like there's going to be rescission from the state. Um, how are we going to do research? How are we going to do this? And then to hear a report like that with all this cool stuff going on, it's just, it's truly amazing that that in spite of COVID, how much has been accomplished. It, it's, it's great. Yeah, I I uh, remember a lot of sleepless nights thinking about you know only a 10% cut thinking that was a good thing. So yeah, we are in a much different place than we are. I will say this though, um, and you all are probably seeing this in your organizations or people you work with, there is a sense of exhaustion that is there. People have really stepped up and I appreciate that's great. And I mean, leadership, faculty, staff, our students. And so it's gonna be important for this summer, not that people take the summer off, it's gonna be important for people to start uh, having one less tension on them. and so. I worry about where we are a year from now, not that we're not going to be doing great things, but uh, this is going to take some time to recover from, and it's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. Maybe the economy is, but I think people's the impact of people's lives and the way they work uh, is, is going to be more long-term. So anyway, Laura, thank you. And uh, Mr. Chair, we can get on with the meeting. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. So at this point, um, since we get to meet together, I think it's a good time in the meeting to have an item to the agenda um, to honor our student region. We finally get to do that in person this year. It's always a privilege of the board to honor the service of students step forward in leadership and uh, served with us alongside us and gave us perspective. Plus, you're heading to graduation today, which is also an exciting thing. So we're going to honor are you with a little gift or a resolution at this time? Kirk, did you have any other? Well, I just, uh, Harley, thank you for your service. It's, uh, I think being a student representative to the board is hard uh, because you see the business side of all the stuff in, in these meetings and you hear the student perspective that sometimes is in direct opposition. It is hard to go into a meeting sometimes and say, hey, I know you all think this is a great idea, but let me tell you where things are. And I appreciate you've done that with Grace. I appreciate you brought forward the student perspective on, on frequent occasions. And all this while trying to finish up a really highly intensive degree uh, program in pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences. So I just want to express my appreciation as president. You've done a fantastic job for us. I know your career is going to continue to skyrocket. And uh, 
look forward to your continual involvement and engagement in WSU and pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences as, as you embark on your career. So thank you. Thank you guys as well. Uh, I would say that like I felt very welcomed by you guys, even though I never got to meet any of you until today, <laughs> which I think was the hardest thing. Like uh, I heard her talking about yesterday, like we don't have like the hallway conversations. I don't get to see you guys like outside of work. It's really just that. But I'm thankful that you guys always give me a chance to speak and are very receptive to what I have to say with me representing all of the students at WSU. But like you guys heard today from Kirk, they're doing a lot of amazing things. So if you guys just continue to hear what they have to say and uh, listen to their perspective, uh, I think it'll be mutually beneficial moving forward. So thank you as well. So thank you, Arlie. I'm going to read a proposed resolution from the board. Whereas on July 1, 2020, Governor Jay Inslee appointed Arlie Guyanan as the student regent of Washington State University. And whereas June 30th, 2021, Regent Guyanan will complete his term on the Board of Regents with distinction. And whereas Regent Kayanan carried out his responsibilities with considerable thoughtfulness, enthusiasm, and loyalty to the students and the entire university community. And whereas Regent Kayanan has served as a passionate and persuasive advocate and voice for all WSU students and always represented the, the university in a positive and professional and competent manner. And whereas while serving as on the board, Regent Kayanan has been an exemplary and generous citizen of the university, giving willingly of his time and talents while endeavoring to advance the university's efforts to serve the public good and communities statewide. And whereas Regent Kayanan has served the gratitude, earned the gratitude, admiration and respect of his board colleagues and students throughout the WSU system for his unwavering devotion and love for the university. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Barley Kayanen be commended for his dedication and service to Washington State University and to the Board of Regents, and be it further resolved that the members of the Board of Regents of the Washington State University system, speaking on behalf of the entire Cougar Nation, acknowledge him with sincere gratitude and appreciation the contributions of Barley Kayanen and wish him success in all of his future endeavors, dated the 7th day of May, 2021. I move for adoption. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution passes. I have a framed copy of the resolution. Oh. For the Army. Would you like to have a picture with us? Yeah, sure. There we mask up. <laughs> Got it. It's for your new office. Oh. <laughs> yes, as soon as I pass those board exams, I will definitely hang this up. <laughs> We are uh, five minutes past the hour. I'd like to take a five minute break and we'll come back at 10 after and I'll try to get you out of here by 1130. Thank you. Early adjourned.
Good. Well, welcome back, everyone. The WSU Board of Regents is back in session. We will now move to our consent agenda. There are eight items on the consent agenda today. I'll read them. Approval of minutes for the March 12th Board of Regents meeting. The establishment of a Master of Applied Economics degree. Establishment of a Master of Engineering and Civil Engineering degree. Establish a Master of Science and Business Administration degree. And four commendations that we have not been able to properly honor some former regents, Regent Mike Worthy, Regent Scott Carson, Regent Ted Baszler, and last year's student, Regent Johanna Pantic. And I will have similar uh, resolutions for them at a later date. Would any regent like to remove any of those items from the consent agenda? And if not, I move to approve the consent agenda as articulated. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oppose the same sign. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is reports from our shared governance groups in the university community um, from the Foundation Board of Governors, Mike Connell reported. Is Mike back on? Yeah. Good morning, Mike, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Let me just uh, do a little screen management, if I may, for me. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, Regent Blankenship, and thank you, uh, uh, my thanks to all the regents for your service to WSU. We greatly appreciate it. I know that for many of us, our greatest resource is time, and thank you for sharing your time. Uh, as many of you know, Lisa Calvert is on uh, medical leave, so I continue to serve in acting vice president capacity at Kirk's uh, instruction. Uh, appreciate Kirk's ongoing confidence in me and my team, as well as the confidence we have from our board of directors. I'm really lucky to have such a strong team of colleagues around me helping us do this work. Uh, maybe a quick update on the numbers. You know, we're in fundraising, so we tend to count these things. Uh, we started the year with a goal of 125 million. As COVID persisted, we scaled that back to 110 million. As of this morning, we're about 94.4 million. We've got 55 days to go. If you use a linear projection, we'd be on target to be a little over 110. Fundraising isn't linear. Normally, uh, spring, May and June can be, especially June can be really strong. So I'm, I'm very confident we'll exceed the 110 number. There's a couple of pretty big gifts in the works as well that aren't done. Uh, we'll count them when they're done. And uh, again, I feel really, really good about the year. Um, maybe a quick shout out that, uh, to, to Pat Chun and his team. I know Kirk commented on that yesterday. They have absolutely knocked it out of the park this year. Um, really, their, their work reinforces the importance of internal communication and coordination, especially when we're dealing with uh, those uh, donors, alums, prospects that have connections with multiple areas of WSU. Many of their recent commitments have been tied to facilities projects at WSU and Kirk, I'm sorry, Pat and his team again have done a great job staying on message and being really clear as to what their priorities are. Um, as we look forward, Kirk's been uh, very clear uh, to those of us that work in the philanthropic space as well as some of the other institutional leaders about the importance of philanthropy integrating into the capital and facilities um, project planning uh, We've had really good conversations with Colleen Kerr uh, on the government affairs side and, and Stacey Pearson and her team on the facility side, as well as chancellors and deans as we look at new projects, uh, new capital projects and, and uh, what they want to accomplish and where philanthropy will fit in that. At our last meeting, I talked a little bit about, or your last meeting, I talked a little bit about uh, the, the campaign organizing committee. We had just started work on that. So I wanted to give a quick update. Uh, really strong engagement from Kirk on this, which I'm very appreciative for. We, we did reach out and recruit nine individuals to serve in this campaign organizing committee uh, capacity. It'll run for 18 to 24 months. We'll meet every other month. Each one of those individuals that joined us did make a significant commitment to the upcoming campaign. Um, we had our first meeting uh, April 21st. We'll meet again in June. 
Uh, they will help us chart the engagement, or excuse me, chart our course for ongoing volunteer engagement, uh, volunteer leadership through the campaign. They'll help with feasibility studies, institutional support, uh, volunteer resources and structure, some of those sorts of things. We're grateful for their time and uh, their thoughts as we continue the, the early seed work on this campaign. I also wanna uh, just give a quick update on the endowment. Uh, most of you know that um, the endowment, uh, the investment committee oversees the endowed assets of the university and the foundation. We have the March 31 numbers. Uh, the endowment is now worth a little over, or was a little over $620 million. Uh, that's the first time we've had a quarter end value over 600 million. Uh, for those of you that, that track the markets, uh, things are actually up more since March 31st. So uh, that's a good, a really good thing for, for WSU. The 12 month trailing return, 31.3%, solid number. Um, most of you are aware that the endowment distributes 1% per quarter, so 4% per year. Easy math would suggest that would mean about $24 million, over $24 million a year would be distributed out to scholarships, uh, faculty endowed positions, excellence dollars for the benefit of deans and programs. So uh, you can see the endowment has a significant impact on uh, a variety of aspects of WSU. Kirk and I don't always coordinate our comments. So I just want to acknowledge uh, that he took care of most of the Coogs gives commentary I was going to share. But, but he was he hit it right on the head. It was a fantastic day for WSU and the folks at VedMed did an excellent job. The other, maybe two other pieces on that, just to comment on, um, a lot of that is social media oriented and we are seeing a greater number of what we think of as conversion. The, the folks that engage in the process actually stepping up and making gifts and it reinforces where this is going. Kirk's exactly right. We'll, we'll be over a million uh, in, in short time. Uh, we're also seeing more of the gifts that are larger and that uh, reflects the fact that the audience is grasping that this is a routine annual thing. We're going to do this every year. They're going to be prepared to participate and have an impact at WSU. It's also worth noting that we do reach out to the volunteer audience and have them serve as ambassadors in the social media space. And those folks really do help uh, drive outcomes as well. So Kooks Give was, was fantastic. Chris also mentioned the Cougar Cage, and as somebody that had a chance to sit in on those presentations, uh, I'm like him, just kind of wowed at some of the things going on at WSU. Um, you know, I appreciate the vetting of more than 50 proposals down to, to six, and Kirk mentioned a couple of the, the ones we heard about. You know, some of the ones he didn't mention, but were, were also really impressive, you know, working to identify drugs that can cause loss, uh, hearing loss in humans, um, and getting that on the front end. Um, and the, and the positive impact it has. You think about how devastating hearing loss can be to people. Um, this other one, I don't even, I can't even read that, the word. I've tried this three different times. So I'm going to say it's a reactor, a bioreactor, but fundamentally it will help with the rapid expansion of, of uh, those T cells that help with cancer fighting. And then um, Katrina Mealy, who, who's our OT chair in small animal research, I'm sorry, small animal medicine over in vet med. She made a proposal for, to purchase a, a piece of equipment will, that will help identify um, situations where specific dog breeds will have adverse reactions to certain medications. Um, she's been doing research like that for a number of years, and this is the next step in that journey. So those are three more of the, the proposals that were funded, and we're just really appreciative to the, the folks in the Clues Club and this Cougar Cage idea. We're going to plan to do it again in the fall in person in Pullman, uh, and it's it's a really exciting uh, event. And, uh, we'll end up um, between the funding we got from a couple of weeks ago and then what will happen in the fall. That's more than a half million dollars of support that will come to WSU from these uh, nine investors. Uh, last week, the WSU Foundation hosted its spring meeting. We did that virtually. Um, that, had a, uh, that included meetings of our board of directors uh, of the foundation, our board of trustees. And then we had uh, interest sessions that we invited folks to. The interest sessions highlight some of the uh, kind of various, I think, cool things going on at WSU as well as just updates. So we had a panel discussion from the chancellors from outside the, the Pullman campus, a, a presentation from the College of Education around their ROAR program, which is uh, uh, a, a really beneficial program at the College of Education. 
uh, Pat provided an update on uh, what's going on in, in uh, Cougar Athletics. So there were a, a number of interest sessions. The trustee meeting itself, we had the uh, we got bit by the technology bug, uh, which was very frustrating. We're, we'll reschedule their meeting, and, and part of their journey is that trustees will be uh, kind of repositioned as WSU advocates. Well, we're in the process of redefining their role, so we'll reschedule that meeting shortly and get them back together and get that done. Uh, we also hosted the, uh, as part of our gathering, we hosted what we call the Recognition Gala. So that's a 41st uh, Recognition Gala. Um, primary purpose of that is to acknowledge those folks who have achieved $500,000 or $1 million of, of cumulative lifetime giving. Uh, I was uh, kind of honored to be able to join Kirk and Noel along with Elizabeth and, and her husband, Michael, in a pre-gala reception with the honorees and the ability to just have a quick conversation with a, a small group of people to, to thank them for their support is incredibly meaningful. And then we flipped the switch uh, and, and went into a virtual gala and the, the presentation of that and the ability for us to go out of our way to spend time thanking each and every one of these uh, groups, some of it's corporate, sometimes it's a private foundation, but mostly it's people, donors, mostly alums who've been this generous to WSU is, uh, you know, it's arguably the best part of our, our work. And it's, and you could also say it's the most important. Um, I, I want to just take a moment to, to maybe in closing to read a note I got from one of the honorees. So a husband and wife, uh, their lifetime giving is now over a million dollars. They've been longtime volunteers to WSU. In fact, the, the, he happens to be at the past, a past chair of our board. Um, professionally, he spent his career in hospitality, so he has a pretty good understanding of uh, hospitality and service. Um, ultimately, the, the work we do in development is part science and part art. Uh, and when we do it well, then you end up in this space that you think of as just transformational engagement with these individuals. So I just want to read the note that he sent to me the next day. It says, Dear Mike, we thoroughly enjoyed Wednesday's events and all the niceties leading up to the special evening and recognition. The journey started with your nice letter and your team's dogged follow-up to make us comfortable with the process and keep us in line. Everyone was great. We loved all that arrived at our remote location to build the excitement. The pride tray and pin, the food and wine, the special bouquet and thoughtful note from President Schultz and you, it all set up what was a unique and special couple of hours that we believe only Cougars could conceive of and pull off. Please let the many, many folks who contributed to this, the most special of Cougar nights in our memories, please let them know how much their hard work, professionalism, and just plain caring has meant to us, as we are certain it meant to the others who were recognized so thoughtfully as well. Go Cougs. With that, I'll turn it back to you. Chair Blankenship, and happy to take questions. Any questions or comments for Mike while we have them available? I would, Mr. Chairman, I'd just say I appreciate Mike's willingness to step in and lead uh, during this time. And what's been great is we haven't really slowed down. Uh, if anything, we've accelerated. And I think that's just really positive. So. Mike's received a lot of kudos from our deans, chancellors, and others for his leadership during this time. So I just don't want anybody thinking that we're kind of sitting around waiting. Uh, we can't afford to do that in this business. And, uh, and I think we're going to have a really fantastic year when all is said and done. So because we've got a lot of we, we a few signatures here or there could make this a pretty good year for us. So yeah, we're close. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. Thanks for everything. Keep it up. <laughs> um, next on the agenda would be the chair of the faculty senate is Dave Turnbull on the line. There you are. Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to uh, start off by announcing that uh, Christine Horn won our election and will serve as the faculty senate uh, chair elect this next academic year. Uh, Professor Horn comes to us from the Department of Sociology. 
Uh, we've already started onboarding her. Uh, she's attended several meetings with the president and the provost and uh, has uh, provided uh, some really terrific input. Secondly, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank the members of our Senate committees. These people worked tirelessly and we simply could not function without them. And I'm talking about committees like the Academic Affairs Committee, the Admissions Subcommittee, the Budget Committee, the Catalog Subcommittee. My favorite committee, the Committee on Committees, uh, the Distinguished <laughs> Faculty Address Committee, the Faculty Affairs Committee, the Graduate Studies Committee, Library Committee, Professional Health Sciences Committee, Research and Arts Committee, Steering Committee, Syllabus Committee, and I know that I have not mentioned all of them. Third, you should know that the Executive Committee continues to work with the President and the Provost's offices on one WSU, specifically regarding promotion and tenure issues and academic structure. We also have two faculty members serving on the system council. Overall, we've experienced a terrific collaboration and we look forward to working with the administration as we move forward. Finally, I really want to express my personal gratitude to Greg Crouch, who will step off the Faculty Senate Executive Committee in August. He worked rigorously for three years to improve how the Senate functions. He rebuilt our website and set up the Senate blog which has been a tremendous help for the past several years, we will miss him. Now, I'd also like to take this opportunity to say uh, how proud I am uh, uh, for the faculty here at Washington State University, how proud I am of the faculty. Um, they took on an enormous challenge during this pandemic and uh, they really came through with flying colors. Um, there were so many times when uh, the faculty were uh, down, but they picked themselves up by the bootstraps and they just kept coming back. I'm sure they're uh, fatigued and exhausted at this point in time, but I can't go uh, on with this meeting without thanking them over and over and over. So thanks to our faculty here at Washington State University. With that, I'm uh, happy to take on any questions you might have. Any questions for Dave? I'm not seeing any, Dave, but thank you for the good report and for the work and the communication <coughs> you provide to us. My pleasure. Take care. All right. Bye bye now. Okay, we'd like to hear from the Associated Students of WSU. Spokane is President Patel on, on the line. I see you. I'm muted. I don't hear you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you would think a year in, I would know better, but I don't. Huh? Hi, Take everyone. it away. Absolutely. So I'll give you a quick update on what we've been working on with the Associated Students. Um, when we went into these positions, obviously, we had completely different expectations and goals in mind, but we were still able to accomplish a lot. So starting with uh, starting off with the gym, for those of you who have been on the Board of Regents for a few years now, I'm sure you've heard about the student gym process or the student gym that we've been building for the past few years. It has finally been completed. We had some roadblocks that we went into um, at the beginning of this year, um, but it's finally open. We were actually also able to include a gender inclusive restroom in it. So I can show you the final version of what we were able to create. Oops, I can figure out. Okay, oh. So this is what our gym looks like now. Um, down here, we did move one of these into our gender inclusive one. So that's the construction that we are going to be wrapping up um, over this summer. But we have all the equipment. Um, this is our study space right here. And then we got rid of these bicycles. So you'll see that. Um, more decor. This is the design that it's going to have on the inside with the cougar on the wooden basketball field basketball court area and then um, these logos and signs for the promotional area. 
Another project that we are working on is renovating our herb building. So that is our where our nutrition and physiology students work. It's on the third floor of the building that's next to the security. And that was in dire need of just some revamping. A lot of students said that the study space there was unwelcoming um, when they took clientele up there. They just didn't feel um, super proud of it, so to say. So we were really proud to be able to have enough money to revamp it. We are gonna be doing the floors, paint, creating these spaces um, that are both group friendly as well as individually friendly. Uh, just cleaning up really their fridges, microwaves, whatever materials that are needed, we'll be able to purchase those. And then having a high table, high rise table by the window to do some more study, uh, study group study areas, as well as just having power outage, power uh, strips put out throughout. So they do have enough cords for laptops, phones, and charging areas. So that's another one that we're doing. Um, so that's for Spokane. And then for Yakima, because uh, nursing did just move over to the PNWU campus, they also had some complaints about not having their own space. So we decided to give them a fund to buy yard material, a storage unit, as well as some tables and tents so that organizations can sign those out and have that whenever they're doing club events because right now they just don't feel like they have a space of their own so we are able to fund that for them um, and then additionally for yakima and spokane we were able to have a fully um, paid program or fully paid plan where we're going to be putting in free menstrual hygiene products into all the restrooms that includes women's gender inclusive and men's um, and that was with the funding from SNA or Senate and through our executive that we have from this year. So those were a couple of things that we're working on, as well as just advocating for mental health, more student resources, giving back for um, TB reimbursements, and really working on being a voice for our students to our faculty, staff, and admin. Any questions, comments? Any questions for Nidhi? If I can just right. make a comment, uh, President Patel, I'll say, um, like you mentioned earlier, uh, it's definitely a, been a different year than what I prepared you for, uh, being the president last year. Um, but I'll, I'll say that you always came with a positive attitude. It was great working with you and the rest of the SGC. And I'm proud of all the things that you guys have done. I'm trying to make sure that you provide as best you can for all the students across WSU. So uh, good job to you. Thank you. Well, thank you for reaching out to Yakima as well. And from the looks of the sketch of the exercise room, it looks like you did a better job for your students than the NCAA did for the women's basketball. <laughs> 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 well, wonderful. Thanks for that great report. Thank you. Thank you. I'm wondering if our uh, Graduate Professional Student Association President is on. Is Jen on? I see I you. Can. Hi, Jen. Good Wait. morning. Perfect. So, yeah, thank you for having me here today uh, to talk about some of the work that GPSA did this year. As it's already been stated, it's been a different year, um, difficult for many of our students. So, we worked really hard at the Association for Graduate and Professional Students to try to restructure um, and transform some of our funding allocations and programs to fit the new needs, um, create some beneficial opportunities. So one area was changing our social programming. Um, we're finding now more than ever, our students are in need of these social connections um, and grad students are known for kind of staying in the lab and there is that need to interact with others. And so we really focused this year on transforming all of our in-person events um, to virtual events. And we ended up hosting more, more events than ever this year. So we had 20 um, different programming events. Almost 1,000 students were able to participate over the year. Um, some new events were a virtual paint night, which was a lot of fun. Our last one was actually with the Dean of Students. We also had virtual dining events or chat and chew events with President Schultz um, and Provost Chilton, along with 
Vice President Mary Jo. Um, all of those were well attended and we got great feedback from them. So we're hoping to continue some of that virtual atmosphere next year, but we're really excited to get back into somewhat in-person programming as well. Um, in addition to programming, we also work to find other engagement opportunities for student groups. And so this year we expanded our um, RSO or our registered student organization allocations to help them come up with new ideas and brainstorm new ways to help the different student groups around campus. Um, we had some really great ideas come up that we were able to help organize and fund. Um, and we actually worked with over 35 different graduate student groups on campus throughout the year. Great to see. And then one of um, our other events and programs, many of you have heard of this over the years, is our Professional Development Initiative, or PDI. Uh, it's currently in its fifth year. And again, we were able, even our, in the virtual world, to put on nearly 40 events. Um, I believe it was over 1,300 students attended those virtual professional development events. Um, we came up with completely new ones to try to fit the new environment. Um, one was the post-pandemic job search blueprint. I actually attended that one. It was very interesting. Um, we had a meet field for training that was new this year. Um, and another one was focusing on teaching assistants. Many grad students feel like they're put into a classroom and not quite ready. So we tried to build some teaching assistant workshops. One was um, how can I support students from un underrepresented communities, which was actually uh, requested by many students. So that was great to see that we were able to put that on. And then I think lastly, one of the programs I want to talk about is travel grants. Um, we know that graduate students, they really need to go to conferences, right? We need to present our research, we need to get feedback, we need to network. Um, and as many of you I'm sure know, most conferences were canceled this year due to the pandemic. And so those opportunities were very limited. Um, and so what we tried to do was expand our program to help students still support them in those ways. So this included virtual conference registrations, um, online certification programs. We tried to research some and provide those opportunities to students, as well as even something like a second language program that they might require for their degree. So we were really excited that we were able to do that. Hopefully we can continue some of that in the upcoming year. Um, but we also know students are going to hopefully start being able to travel to conferences again. So we'll see that we'll see that program pick up as well. And then lastly, um, in addition to expanding our programs and services, we also focus on expanding our presence at the in the community as well as at the university and that included trying to put more graduate and professional students on different committees advisory groups so that we ensure that our voice is heard uh, we are a smaller percentage of students on campus but we know a lot of decisions were being made this year changing different things around and so we really pushed to have representation on those different committees um, and all of that advocacy advocacy led to the creation of the first ever um, Graduate Student Bill of Rights, which was very exciting to see. So a big part of our organization is advocating for our students, um, both in Pullman as well as on our Research and Extension Center site. So our Vice President of Legislative Affairs and his committee really worked with President Schultz, WC Administration, and Dean Gloss to create the Bill of Rights for graduate students, just kind of stating and outlining our rights, our expectations of students that we expect as part of the WSU community. Uh, last month, we met with everyone and finalized it, agreed on the language, and we'll be signing it hopefully this week or next. And then the goal will be to get it into graduate student handbooks um, and different programs in the fall. So pretty excited about that. And I think maybe just my last note is a fun side note, but GPSA actually is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, um, which is pretty impressive considering other graduate student groups we work with across the country, you know, they're pretty brand new. So it's, I'm really proud that GPSA and WCU is a lot of space for graduate students to have a voice for 50 years now. <laughs> exciting so we couldn't have a big in-person celebration like we wanted but we were able to you know promote that a little bit there was an article the university did which was great to see and hopefully we just continue to grow for the next 50 years so with that uh again thank you to the administration thank you to the board of regents for supporting us and i would be happy to answer any questions any questions for jen also want to make sure that the board congratulates dr johnson I'm finishing up the degree, so way well done. Thank you.
that was going to be my question. Was, <laughs> so we felt more connected to you. What What is your degree path? So what? I just completed my PhD in environmental and natural resources. Amazing. Well thank done. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for your service and thanks for the great report. And sure. managed all the while working on a PhD. Right. Right. Well, well done. The Administrative Professional Advisory Council President Hannah McLeod. Hannah, are you on? Hi, yes, thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for this time. Um, I would like to uh, update you on um, what APAC has done this year and what we're looking forward to do this next year. Um, we are continuing um, our partnership and working towards um, the 1WSU effort that the system administration um, has put out there. APAC has been working as a system um, for many years now, and we hope to continue that work and grow it as uh, the 1WSU effort moves forward. Um, by doing that, we are updating our strategic plan framework um, to make sure that we're really representing 1WSU, APAC, and our constituents across the WSU system. Um, one thing that we're really excited uh, to be doing this year, or we started this year and continue into the next year, is we're building our relationship with HRS. Um, we know that uh, we can help that relationship with staff and HRS on um, trainings, information sharing, uh, emerging issues, and then also getting talking points from HRS when concerns come up, and we can communicate that with um, our constituents. Um, we have started a collaboration with the University of Washington's equivalent group. Um, this started out of the concern over um, the potential furloughs uh, put in by the governor uh, that would impact um, administrative professionals statewide. So um, that's where the conversation started. Um, we will continue working with them, um, but we're excited that um, working together, we can have a stronger voice. Um, across the state. Um, so like Faculty Senate, I would like to say um, a special thank you to all of our staff um, across the WSU system. Um, it has been quite a year and a lot of load is put on staff to hold things together. Um, and everyone is tired. Um, so I know we're all very thankful for the this year to be closing up. Um, with that, uh, we are excited to award our AP contribution awards uh, at our last meeting on May 13th. Uh, we received um, more than 55 nomination letters uh, for these awards. And with the generous expansion of the award um, this year by the president's office, we are um, able to recognize 10 outstanding staff members. Um, we know that all staff members have been contributing um, over this year, and we are very excited to recognize um, 10. And uh, the council has elected new members for the 21-22 uh, school year, um, and we look forward to the continued efforts, um, increased advocacy, and focusing on our diversity, equity, and inclusion, and any other emerging issues. Um, and with that, that uh, concludes my report. Um, thank you uh, for all of your support and time today. Thank you, Anna. Any questions for Anna? All good. Thank, thanks for a job well done. Great, thank you so much. The Alumni Association President is Doug Wilcox and Tim Pavish may be on the line with him or for him. So Tim, are you on? Yes, I am. Thank you, Chairman Blankenship, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to present to you this morning. Um, both Doug Wilcox, our current president, as well as our incoming president, Shelly Spangler, aren't able to join us today, um, and they send their sincere regrets. Uh, it is, however, my honor today to report to you on two very special groups of Cougs. The first group is our 2021 class of top 10 seniors. Um, they're truly remarkable. Um, each year, the 
Alumni Association, along with our student, student club, the student alumni ambassadors work with a selection committee um, comprised of faculty, staff, and stu students from across the WSU uh, system um, to recognize the top seniors in each graduating class. The women and men selected uh, represent the highest standards in uh, specific aspects of the college experience, um, including academics, athletics, campus involvement, community service, visual and performing arts. Uh, this year's top 10 seniors include seniors from across the WSU system. We have students from Everett, Pullman, Tri-Cities, and Vancouver campuses. And uh, you can check them out. Uh, they're all featured on the WSU homepage. Um, I encourage you to, to, to go to the homepage and, and look these seniors up. Their stories are incredibly uh, inspiring and motivational. Um, I'm sure that you guys will all come away very, very proud of the students at Washington State University, especially these top 10 seniors. The second group of extraordinary coups that I want to mention is the incoming uh, team of officers for the WSU Alumni Association. Um, this group um, hails from as far away as Hawaii and Colorado and then across the state of Washington. Uh, Shelly Spangler, as I mentioned, is our incoming uh, president. Uh, she's an 07 WSU grad and is the manager of finance for uh, SCL St. Joseph's Hospital in Denver. Mark Schuster is the president-elect and Mark is the 95 grad and he's the vice president of supply chain at Lamb Weston Corporation. And for those of you who participated in last week's gala, um, the Lamb Weston Corporation was recognized as one of WSU's newest laureates. Uh, and Mark lives in the Tri-Cities. Lester Barbero is vice president uh, for the coming year. Uh, Lester is a 2010 grad and a me mechanical engineer with the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard in Honolulu. Tracy Powell, our chapter and club president's representative on the board of directors uh, is a WSU Vancouver grad. She graduated in 02 and is our uh, Vancouver area chapter president. You've all had a chance to meet Doug Wilcox during his presidency. Doug is a 1965 graduate from Palouse, Washington and he will uh, continue his service to the university and the alumni association for the coming year as our immediate past president. Uh, speaking of Doug, he introduced uh, to the alumni association a new leadership method that he put into place during his presidency. He really leveraged the skills of, of all of the officers and, and in so doing had the president, the president elect and the vice president all working together um, uh, as kind of a, a three-person team to lead the Alumni Association. And it worked incredibly well. And um, I've talked with Shelly, Mark, and Lester, and they plan to continue to lead um, as a team. We're really lucky to have the officers we do. They're talented and resourceful and provide insightful guidance. Uh, the officers are incredibly smart and have an equally incredible work ethic. Um, you know, it kind of goes without saying they deeply care about the well-being of WSU and the WSU Alumni Association, which I know um, helps to drive them to be such effective uh, and important volunteer leaders. Uh, you'll have a chance to meet Shelly. Uh, she's going to be at your next Regents meeting, and we're really excited for you to meet her. I think you guys will love her as much as we do. Uh, she's going to do an extraordinary job as, as our president uh, this coming year. With that, thanks again for letting me speak to you this morning. And as always, go Kooks. Thank you, Tim. Any comments or questions from the board? Thank you for keeping our alumni engaged and it keeps growing. Thank you so much. Well, we can move along to the business portion of the meeting. Um, we will have uh, committee reports. If action items come to the board's attention, I will read those motions from here. 
So I see Lisa online and we have uh, the Research and Academic Affairs Committee report. Lisa. Thank you, Chairman. We had a great meeting and uh, some of those actions that uh, we were hoping would occur have occurred um, within I have been put on the agenda for the consent, um, which include the three degree programs. Um, a couple other comments that I wanted to make uh, regarding our meeting from yesterday. Um, there was a faculty manual uh, update, which you might see within the notes of our particular committee meeting. And I think this just continues to speak to the importance of having faculty representation on the Board of Regents. But um, we had Dr. Crouch who mentioned uh, the proactive nature and the collaborative commitment that our faculty has uh, during times of crisis. So even though we saw that it was just kind of a, a small little part of what we were looking at, it was an incredibly important and as our provost mentioned, remarkable moment where we have the <laughs> faculty really looking at um, what happens in terms of furlough and temporary salary reductions in times of budgetary crisis. So it's an important comment that I think um, we all need to, to recognize that we are in partnership with our faculty and, and it was just a great opportunity for them to lead and for us to hear directly from Dr. Crouch about kind of where the faculty was. So um, I wanted to mention that. I also wanted to mention that we had a presentation by Dr. Barbosa Leiker and Dr. Roll regarding um, COVID and it was just an incredibly impactful presentation. Um, I appreciate um, President Schultz moving forward some of our marketing initiatives to be able to tell our story. Um, this is another just really critical story that we want to make sure continues to get out into the uh, the broad public, but the work that they're doing is so impactful and uh, Regent Powell mentioned the need for us to really spend some quality time hearing more about the great work that's being done by WSU as it relates to COVID. So um, my understanding is that we have a commitment to do a follow up, whether it's an informal session or a more formal session, but we do want to hear more about what's being done uh, within the university to advance this important work. So it was a great meeting, like it always is, couple highlights that I wanted to share. And then, as I mentioned, some action that'll be occurring within the consent agenda. So with that, I think that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Shower. Great report. Any questions for the chair? Thank you. The Student Affairs and Student Life Committee also met Regent Sims, do you have a short report? I do. The, uh, we, had, uh, we had one topic that uh, we discussed all meeting, which was the uh, university's approach uh, on uh, the COVID pandemic. And, um, and I don't think anybody, in fact, I said this, I don't think there's anybody in the country doing it better than Washington University. One, Everybody's being tested. Nobody's being accepted. Uh, anybody, nobody's being allowed to be an exception to it, which is really, really the key. Uh, social distancing uh, mandates, all, all the things that you would want uh, in regards to responding to this pandemic were being done by the, uh, every single uh, area in Washington University, whether it's Spokane campus, Everett campus, Vancouver, Pullman campus, uh, Tri-Cities. It was really pretty amazing. Um, I, my only suggestion was that uh, for those of us who've had work pandemics, you always want somebody to keep real detailed records so you know what to do it next time. And I think Washington State University uh, needs to uh, be taking everything that they have put in place and putting it in a volume so that in a future pandemic people can see what excellence looks like, because right now, Washington University has an old peer. For all the phone calls you get to be on, like the ones I just had to get finished, Washington University is in a class of its own, um, and that needs to be understood and applauded. They're, do, they're excellent. Uh, and that was our meeting yesterday. It was just basically talking about uh, response to COVID, but um, 
I just want to capture the lessons we learned and what we put in place. That's what you need to do. Um, and uh, so we have a lot to offer other universities. And we have a lot to offer people who are going to be dealing with future generations. In the future generation, we're also going to be dealing with uh, pandemics and uh, viruses like the COVID. Um, so it was a great meeting. I was excited and I hope, I just hope that we are going to capture it and put it in writing and make it available to other universities in particular as to how you do this right. And we are doing it with excellence. I respond to any questions anybody may have, but we don't have a peer in this. There are no peers. Um, I know what other universities are doing. I know what other governments are doing. Washington University has no peer in regards to how we're handling this pandemic. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for the encouraging word, too. Any other questions for Regent Sims? Thank you. The Institutional and Infrastructure Committee is chaired by Regent Redmond. Heather, do you have a report? Sure, yeah, just uh, very quickly. Uh, we spent most of our time on real estate matters uh, in this meeting, and we've been trying as a committee to take things up sort of a strategic level. So really taking our charter to include the idea of, of using our resources most effectively and making you know, those hard choices about how we deploy capital. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time in this meeting, but I think we will in future meetings also on infrastructure uh, that relates more to technology, uh, because that's another area of focus for, for our committee. So we um, we covered the um, now I think we've done it twice the the really big job of trying to get our arms around all of the real estate assets. Uh, that we have as an institution. And um, that is something that, that Stacy and team have done a great job of doing. Uh, there were a lot of um, sort of puzzle pieces that had to be picked up off the floor and, uh, and categorized and, and put together. And now we're in a position, I think, to make real sense out of the assets that we have. So we'll continue to do that work. Um, also, there's a lot of emotional attachment to real estate. It's one of those things that we as humans get very wrapped around. And so some very hard, but I think um, strategic and courageous decisions have been made uh, about uh, some of the property that we that we have and uh, the need to continue to refine how we approach some of the, the best uses of, of that real estate. Uh, we have one action item, which you'll cover in our um, in our presentation, but I will say that that action item, which relates to the Life Sciences Building at WSU Vancouver, has even better news behind it, uh, which is that we now have the funding to, to build that building as well, uh, which is really terrific news and uh, a credit, again, to not only the staff and the team, but also to Regents. I see I see Lisa clapping up there, who've uh, been uh, been pushing this um, too. So so thank everybody. Uh, thank you to everyone for their help with that. Uh, that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Heather. The action item is: I move that the Board of Regents approve the schematic design for the WSU Vancouver Life Sciences Building Project as proposed. Is there a second? I second. second. I thought you might. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Heather. The next committee was the Strategic and Operational Excellence Committee with Regent Lerner Powell. Thank you. Um, we had a, uh, a few different items. We had a future action item at the meeting, uh, two action items, and an information item. Uh, the future action item was a report by Vice President DeWall on the SP3 Northwest project initiative. Um, SP3 Northwest is stands for spin out space in Spokane. It's basically a life sciences incubator that's um, designed uh, to both build and to grow startup companies. 
Uh, to date, the Bank of America has provided $250,000 in initial funding, and they recently received a $750,000 grant from the EDA for pandemic response. This is really uh, very focused on um, contributing to WSU's economic development goals, which is very important for us as a um, uh, state university. Um, this venture um, holds great promise, both for WSU and the foundation. And the foundation, this will actually be incorporated as a 501c3 and held within the WSU Foundation. So there's a, a great deal of opportunity um, for the future here, and um, we look forward to seeing that before us as an action item soon. Our first action item was basically a name change, uh, but, a, but actually a quite an important um, uh, concept behind the name change. Um, it's proposed that the Board of Regents approve the renaming of the Paul G. Allen School for Global Animal Health to the Paul G. Allen School for Global Health, and the, and the renaming of the Paul G. Allen School for Global Animal Health building to the Paul G. Allen Center for Global Health. And as you can hear from that, um, basically, um, it has been more, it's now focused more on global health than just specifically on animal health. And, and what has happened since the initial mission, which was to improve um, animal, human health by control of infectious diseases, diseases with a focus on um, emerging and zoonotic uh, infectious diseases. So there was that very much animal focus. But as the po programs have grown and expanded, the school's programs are now broadly directed at uh, global health and encompass things like maternal child nutrition, COVID-19, influenza, immunization programs, in addition to zoonotic and emerging infectious diseases at both the animal and the human interfaces. So this proposal um, is really focused on a, to a, a broadening of the direction for those um, facil the facility and the institute. So it has received appropriate review and concurrence and that is now ready for board action. Thank you, Laura. Any questions before we proceed? Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents Bylaw 2.12.B. I therefore move that the Board of Regents rename the Paul G. Allen School for Global Animal Health the Paul G. Allen School for Global Health and renamed the Paul G. Allen School for Global Animal Health Building, the Paul G. Allen Center for Global Health as proposed. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Larry. Um, our next action item was on election of officers, which we do at this meeting each year. And it is proposed that Regent Lisa Schauer be elected to serve as Vice Chair of WSU Board of Regents for the year beginning July 1, 2021, with the expectation that she will automatically then succeed as Chair of the Board the following year. This proposal is ready for action. Thank you. I move that Lisa Schauer be elected to serve as Vice Chair of the WSU Board of Regents for the year beginning, July 1, 2021, with the understanding that she shall act as Chair pro tempore in the absence of the Chair, with the power to preside at the meetings and to sign all instruments required to be executed by the WSU Board of Regents. Is there a second? Second. Move then seconded. Any other discussion? And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, our final item was a legislative update uh, from Vice President Kerr. And we talked about um, 
all the wonderful uh, priorities that we had that have been funded by the legislature this year. And um, we, we express, we express um, our gratitude to both to the legislature and to all those who worked uh, so hard to um, help the legislature understand uh, these priorities and why they're so important, not just to WSU, but for the future of our state. So um, it, was, it's, it was a great year and we are really excited to move forward. And that, Mr. Chairman, concludes my report. Thank you for the fine report. That um, brings us to the Finance and Compliance Committee report under the purview of Vice Chair Marty Dickens. Thank you. Well, we had a uh, jam-packed committee session um, on finance and compliance. Um, we have several action items here today uh, that we will go through. Um, our highlights really were um, getting a good review and um, overview, if you will, of a revised athletic budget plan that really addresses short-term um, needs to shore up the budget, as well as addresses long-term payment of debt and how we spread that debt out over the course of the many years ahead of us. But it's a good plan. Um, I think that the Board of Regents feels um, we're confident with what we're seeing and are looking forward to um, being able to tick away at that. I would like to say a special thank you um, to obviously Stacy Pearson's leadership with Matt Skinner's help and then Pat Chun and John Harlow um, within the athletic department. So um, why don't we just start going through each action item? Does that work for you? Yes. Okay. Ready. The first one being our academic year of 2021 and 2022 tuition rates? Sure, I move that the Board of Regents set tuition rates for the academic year 2021-2022 as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Other discussion? Arlie? Uh, just if I can speak, um, I'm not exactly sure, since we haven't voted yet, if this uh, tuition increase will take place. However, I just asked with COVID going on, um, moving forward as Board of Regents, we do what we can to reevaluate every component of WSU, making sure that we can get them, if not self sensating but as close to that as we can, making sure that we are providing as, like, as best value to the students who are paying like a lot of money to come to this nice uh, university, just making sure that like, you know, we are providing for them and like not forgetting about them. Because I think with COVID, this is a really good time that the way that we provide our education to students is going to change. And that I think moving forward, it would be a really good opportunity for us to reevaluate how every component of WSU is doing financially, like with how we've looked at with the athletics budget. I think this would be a good opportunity with every facet of WSU to make sure that we're providing the best to the students. And then on my own onus, and as well as the next student region, working with Stacey Pearson to communicate that to students. So I want to take onus of that as well. But that's my only ask moving forward with this tuition increases that we're reevaluating. Any response, comments? Thank you. Uh, you have prompted what I believe was a good conversation yesterday as well, um, student region Kayam, in really a higher level discussion and perhaps even at our upcoming retreat but also how we're going to be able to format future even regent meetings to have bigger conversations around strategy on things like long-term tuition and, and how we address that. So um, your comments are uh, really valuable and you should please know that you uh, brought it to the table and we will be evaluating and discussing it. So thank you. Any other comments? I'll call for the real vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. Next action item is, um, and I'll, there's- I'll, I'll declare the motion. Oh, excuse me, okay. sorry. With one of opposition. So that motion is next. Thank you. Sorry, I was just trying to, it's got a long list of them here. So. <laughs> uh, the next um, action items have uh, really involve uh, student fees, service and activity fees, um, I guess we were able to have good discussion on that as well yesterday. Um, good dialogue. Appreciate the intention and thoughtfulness that our student committees have had around really looking at this, especially during the time of COVID and um, trying to kind of stay within our means, uh, but also recognizing that 
There are things that need to be done, like a um, Coops Against Hunger Student Fee Pantry, excuse me, a Coops Against Hunger Student Food Pantry Fee. But then also at times that when you don't do um, increases, that means there's going to be some sacrifices that have to be made. So it was good dialogue around those um, conversations. And um, I personally am proud of Washington State University students and their thoughtfulness in a lot of the work that they've done um, as we go through these particular action items. So the next motion is the service and activities fee rates for 2021 and 2022. I move that the Board of Regents approve the academic year 2021-2022 service and activities fee rates as recommended by the student-led SNA fee committees representing each of the WSU campuses as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And now the service and activities fee allocations for summer 2021 and academic year 2021 and 2022. I move that the Board of Regents approve the allocations of services and activities fees for summer 2021, 2021 and academic year 2021, 2022, as recommended by the services and activities fee committees representing each of the WSU campuses as proposed. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. It's moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, our next one, um, obviously we just touched on this. It's the hunger student food pantry fee. Uh, again, we were fortunate enough to listen to um, and hear from two very impressive Washington State University students who led this effort um, in regards to really addressing the need of uh, student hunger and uh, food security. And uh, noted that our WSU students approved this with a 70% approval rate. Yeah, kudos to the students. Before bringing the motion, I know for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents bylaw 2 period 1 2 period B. I move that the Board of Regents approve a new mandatory fee of $5 per semester fall and spring for full time Pullman undergraduate students beginning the fall of 2021 as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next um, up, we have our WSU Vancouver Technology Fee Committee allocations for fiscal year 2021. Vancouver. I move that the Board of Regents approve the academic year 2021-2022 allocations as recommended by the Vancouver Student Technology Fee Committee as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. And got to go back. I skipped one, so we're back up to Pullman, to WSU Pullman's Undergraduate Technology Fee Committee allocations for fiscal year 2021. I was just trying to see if you were following along. <laughs> I move that the Board of Regents approve the academic year 2021-2022 allocations as recommended by the Pullman Undergraduate Student Technology Fee Committee as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries. Next is our WSU Pullman proposed changes to parking system rates and fines. We were able to have a, a good overview um, with uh, Stacy Pearson giving us an outline and overview of where those increases will be occurring, um, as well as uh, the projects around maintenance to where those dollars will be um, assisting uh, in bringing some things up to uh, make, bringing them in a, a better level of maintenance across our campus. Uh, so I'll turn it to you to read. Very good. I move that the Board of Regents adopt proposed changes to the parking rates and fines effective July 1, 2021 on the Pullman campus. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, action item eight is we have the Northwest Public Broadcasting participation in the Paycheck Protection Program um, and asking the board uh, to authorize this uh, short-term related financing. Uh, we will move to, a, to look to do that. There could be an opportunity to get PPP funding, but there also is a risk in that we may not due to the fact that um, it was, it came as a surprise to everybody, not to just um, the Northwest Public Broadcasting, uh, that PPP was being shut down as of last week or as of Wednesday this past week. So before bringing the motion, I note for the record, it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents bylaw 2.12.B. I move that in association with WSU Northwest Public Broadcasting's application to participate in the Paycheck Protection Program, the Board of Regents issue approve issuance of a short-term financing contract to be repaid with the general university revenues generated by WSU Northwest Public Broadcasting with net proceeds <coughs> not to exceed $575,000 a final maturity not to exceed five years and a maximum interest rate not to exceed 3% and, to, and further propose that the Regents delegate authority <coughs> to the president or his designee to execute the financing contract in support of the application, which will be contingent upon acceptance into the Paycheck Protection Program. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Is there other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Action item nine is um, for the board to approve the revised 2021, 2021 athletics budget. And again, we were able to review that yesterday in greater detail. <coughs> we're able to uh, have better clarity um, as to how the current situation with COVID was actually impacting and impacted 2021. I therefore move that the Board of Regents approve the revised fiscal year 2021 athletics budget as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Action item 10 is um, the approval for the fiscal year 2022 athletic budget. Again, which we were able to uh, review in greater detail and understand some forecasting that the Board of Regents believes to be appropriate with the information we have at this time. And before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents bylaw 2.12.B. I move that the Board of Regents approve the fiscal year 2022 athletics budget as proposed. Is there a second? Second. 
Moved and seconded. Is there other discussion? All those in, mo in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Action item 11 is um, to address financing plan uh, that addresses COVID related losses in WSU's intercollegiate athletics. It's to authorize the issuance and sale of bonds or other obligations in one or more series to you to be used to offset revenue losses in WSU intercollegiate athletics created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided <coughs> that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with Board of Regents Bylaw 2.12.B. I move that the Board of Regents approve a general revenue obligations resolution, the resolution to authorize the issuance and sale of bonds or other obligations in one or more series to be used to offset revenue losses in WSU intercollegiate athletics created by the COVID-19 pandemic with net seeds for the project not to exceed $35,600,000 a final maturity not to exceed October 1st, 2041, and a maximum interest rate not to exceed 5%. And delegate authority to the president or his designee to sell the bonds or other obligations, including the authority to determine the final issue size, amount of capitalized interest, maturity schedule, redemption provisions, method, and timing of sale. Is there a second? A second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. That completes the Finance and Compliance Committee. I hope for the. Thank you, Regent Dickinson. Um, other business, the board did meet in executive session with legal counsel yesterday, yesterday, May 6th, and we discussed pending litigation or potential litigation involving the university. Related to that discussion, we have the following action item. I move to adopt resolution 210507-640, approving the request for legal defense of a university employee. Is there a second? I second it. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion as read, please say aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Well, that takes us to, to the end of the agenda and the public comment period. We now have allowed 10 minutes of the meeting for the public to provide comments to the board, uh, limiting the issues to ish, uh, items that could come before the board. And please keep in mind, there is a two minute limit per speaker. And is this list current? Yes. So if they are queued up online, is Alex Hammond, treasurer of the College Hill Association, um, on the line? I see a picture of Alex. And am I live? Now you're live. Um, my, so you have my apologies and thank you. Uh, the uh, for briefly, uh, the, I'm a retired professor. I've uh, been at College Hill since uh, uh, for 20 so years. I appear for the College Hill Association to comment on information items three and four in your packet. 
CHA is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization that has worked since 1992 to improve the quality of life on Hollow Hill, which you will know is the vibrant residential and resident, residential and pedestrian neighborhood adjacent to the campus, home to the Greek community, and Pullman's only National Register of Historic District and traditional gateway to WSU. The CHA has strong concerns about WSU's decision just announced in these information items to divest itself of the Abrams Mall property and four off-campus cultural and heritage houses. Please know the CHA applauds the administration's hope that selling Adams Mall might have, quote, positive aesthetic and economic effects on the College Hill neighborhood, consistent with the university's original intent to revitalize the area and to create a safe and attractive place to live, close quote. We urge that the administration provide assurance that selling this property would actually produce these speculative results. Furthermore, Adams Mall is, a Pullman, is Pullman's oldest school building and has unique community significance. Any redevelopment should honor that fact. In the rationale for selling the culture and heritage houses, we appreciate the administration's acknowledgement of WSU's, quote, prior objective to support revitalization of the College Hill area, quote. Surely revitalization should be an ongoing objective. WSU plays a critical role in shaping its near campus environment for students and visitors and should not abandon commitment to this objective by measuring the value of these houses on narrow grounds. We will soon submit information on how revitalization and historic preservation will ultimately enhance WSU's ability to achieve its mission and on why divestment of these properties without community-wide planning would be counterproductive. The culture houses are historically important with three of the four located in the National Historic District. Their loss threatens irreparable damage to the built environment that surrounds and represents WSU's history and cultural heritage. Listing them on Pullman's local register is the most responsible way to protect that heritage. In sum, we believe WSU has an obligation to handle these decisions with a long term strategy that respects the historic character of its gateway neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to comment. Do you have written, written comments for the record? Uh, I can submit those, but read, read uh, the longer comments will be coming later. Very good. Thank you. Um, is Nolan Thomaswick on the line? Yes, hello. Nolan, would you like to address us? Yes, please. Um, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am Nolan Thomas, the incoming president of ASWSU Global. And um, on the topic of raising tuition, many global students are non-traditional students supporting themselves or even families. This 2.5% tuition hike puts tuition and fees costs of WSU for out-of-state students above the federal aid cap. So the students must make up the difference. Also, Summer classes are integrated into the global degree programs. My total bill, for example, for summer classes is over $6,400. The only federal aid supplied for summer classes is carried over for the academic year. There wasn't much carryover before, and now there will be none. And this doesn't even factor in other yearly expenses like textbooks and online labs. It has been repeated that the 2.5% increase will be used for mental health and basic needs. Global SNA fees currently fund mental health and basic need resources, such as our reimbursements program. Yesterday, a justification for the tuition increase was the decrease in these SNA fees. It was also said a decrease in fees is not necessarily a good thing as it means less money for salaries, organizations, student positions, et cetera. Well, I was on the global allocation committee and I fully supported the 10% decrease for global. Even after fully allocating to our student organizations and allocating over $600,000 in fee to Pullman, global still sits at a carry forward surplus of over $1.2 million. That being said, it would have been pertinent to know about the tuition increase during SNA deliberations, but ASWSU was only informed of the increase last Friday during the Student Government Council meeting, much to the chagrin of all the student members. Incremental tuition increases of 2.5% might seem minimal compared to the previous increases shown, but considering tuition has greatly outpaced inflation since 2000, greatly outpaced it, I and other students disagree. So in closing, I just want to say 
I'm disappointed that there was not more time for the students to discuss this, to ask questions. Like I said, we were only informed last weekend. Um, I really would have liked to ask, uh, considering that Global sits on that $1.2 million SNA surplus and that each campus, especially Global, has different needs and accesses, what specifically will the tuition increase fund in terms of mental health and basic needs? And how will those specific benefits be equitable between campuses when the needs and access of Global Campus students are different than other campuses? Would it be allocated to the respective student governments to then allocate? And if not, how would those allocating know a campus's needs better than ASWSU? Thank you for your time today. Thank you for the thoughtful comment. And I believe we have uh, Hai Fang Wen on the line as well. Our is our third speaker still on? I don't believe they're still on the line. And no one else has signed up? Well, that concludes our public comment period. Thank you for the commenters. That brings us to the end of our agenda. If there's nothing else before the board, then I will adjourn the meeting. And I thank you all for attending. Meeting adjourned.